Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species-specific care and husbandry videos like this, as well as all things tarantula, scorpion, and invert related, well, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on all notifications. Just click that little bell. That way you'll be alerted every time I upload a new video in the future. Today, we're talking about Florida bark scorpions. Now this species of scorpion I've kept longer than almost any other. I think it was the second species of scorpion I ever added to my collection. And I've raised one up from like a second or third instar all the way to an adult. But they're fast growers, so it's only been like about a year, or maybe a little bit less. Now currently I have six of these scorpions all in one communal and I've already had two gravid females produce broods, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's get into the care and husbandry first. The C. gracilis, or Florida bark scorpion, actually originated in Cuba, but can now be found in a lot of the southern United States and northern parts of South America. They have even been found in the Canary Islands, Gaboon, and Cameroon, most likely unintentionally brought there by people. This is a semi-arboreal species that lives mostly on the bark of trees and under fallen trees. This scorpion is known to climb up the base of the tree and find hiding places in the crevices of the bark. They are a communal species and can be found in nature sharing the same hides and living in very close proximity to each other. They can grow to between three and a half to four and a half inches in size, with the males being longer and skinnier, with elongated metasoma segments, while the females are thicker or stockier. They mostly have a reddish brown color, but are polymorphic meaning there are different color variations even within one brood. Some appear to be more black or maybe different shades of brown. They can also be black with a little red, dark brown with yellow legs, or dark brown with reddish and black tail sections. These scorpions are not very defensive, but definitely skittish. When disturbed, they will usually try to retreat and hide as opposed to standing their ground or trying to sting. They can move very fast, so always be mindful. This is a communal species, and I have had no issues keeping mine together as adults. The bark scorpions are prolific breeders, so you should expect that you will eventually have gravid females if you're keeping males and females together. On average, their broods can be anywhere from eight to as many as 30. The first brood in my care was 35 scorplings, though about five of them were sickly and didn't live very long after leaving their mother's back. When my gravid female has a brood, I carefully remove her from the communal and set her up in her own small enclosure to raise her young in peace without having to worry about the other scorpions trying to eat her young. Scorplings climb onto their mother's back and stay there during the first instar of their life, feeding off the nutrients the mother excretes from her back. After they molt, they enter their second instar stage and still spend some time on her back at first, but wander off and start exploring soon after. Once most of the baby scorpions have moved off their mother, I begin to carefully remove them one by one and place them in their own tiny enclosures. I use small two ounce deli cups with ventilation holes in the sides and on the top. It is important to separate them at this stage of life because they can become cannibalistic as juveniles, usually attacking and eating their siblings when they are molting. I then reintroduce the mother back to the communal. It is important to know that most likely she will mate again shortly after being reintroduced and can have another brood within four to six months. Males typically reach sexual maturity around the sixth or seventh instar, while females are able to have young at the seventh instar. For the first few molts, I keep my squirplings in their small deli cups on a mixture of 60-40 peat moss or cocoa fiber and sand. They don't really do any burrowing, so it is important to add a small piece of cork bark that they can hide under and climb. I just cut a cork bark flat into small chunks and place them in there. These scorpions do require humidity, especially at this size. So I dribble a little water on the substrate to keep it a little damp and lightly mist the enclosure twice a week. I will also put in a little piece of sphagnum moss to help maintain the humidity levels. I keep them in my spiderling nursery that has an ambient temperature and humidity higher than that of the rest of the room. I keep the temperature in the nursery around 78 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Once they outgrow those enclosures, I move them into the same type of enclosures I use for a lot of my spiderlings. But an eight or 16 ounce deli cup would work as well. These baby scorpions grow quickly, usually reaching adult sizes in seven or eight months. And there may be a lot of them, so you don't need to invest a lot of money in fancy enclosures unless you just have a few. I use the same mixture of substrate, add a taller piece of cork bark, and keep the substrate slightly damp and mist the enclosure once or twice a week. I also keep these size enclosures in the nursery so they're a little bit warmer. When they have reached near adult size, around three inches or so, I introduce them into the communal setup that I have. It is important that there is plenty of vertical 
room and things for them to climb and hide. Currently, I am using the Exoterra small tall enclosure that measures 12 by 12 by 18, with three different large pieces of cork bark leaned up against the sides. I keep a large but very shallow water dish in the middle of the enclosure and keep it full at all times. It is very important that this dish be shallow because if you use a deep water bowl, there could be problems. Unlike tarantulas, scorpions can drown in their water dish so keep them shallow and easy for them to get out of. I also mist the enclosure down once or twice a week and keep the substrate slightly damp. I put a small under tank heater on one side of the enclosure to give them an area that is slightly warmer than the rest of the enclosure. The temperature in that section does not go above 82 degrees Fahrenheit. There are many other keepers that insist a heat pad is not necessary and just keep theirs at room temperature. So whatever works for you. I think this species would do very well in a bioactive setup because of their needs for a higher humidity and I plan on converting my current enclosure into a bioactive enclosure in the near future so make sure you stay tuned to see that video. As far as feeding, I feed my squirplings one pinhead or very small cricket once or twice a week. You can also use pinhead red runners or other small prey no larger than the scorpion. I will sometimes smash the heads of the prey that is more than half the size of the baby scorpion so it is still moving and twitching, but it won't be able to bite. I remove any uneaten prey or leftovers the next day. It is important to spot clean because the higher humidity can lead to issues with mold and mites if you leave uneaten organic matter in their enclosure. Once they've gotten a little larger and are in their juvenile stage, I will feed them one small cricket once or twice a week. When they start looking plump, I feed them no more than once a week, but sometimes every other week. I wait four to five days after a molt before attempting to feed again. As for adults, I feed two to three medium or one to two large crickets a week at first and cut back the amount and frequency as they get more plump. If you're keeping them communally, it's a little different. For my communal, I usually drop in two to three crickets per scorpion once a week. If I notice there are no crickets in the enclosure and it's been a few days since they've been fed, I will drop in a few more feeders. I try to keep them well fed and prey readily accessible so they don't turn to cannibalism out of hunger. So far I've had no issues with cannibalism in my communal and I've been keeping them well fed. These scorpions, like all scorpions, are reactive to UV light, meaning their exoskeletons glow under black light except right after a molt. This comes in very handy when rehousing or spot cleaning their enclosure. I turn on the black light or use my black light flashlight while interacting with them because it makes them very easy to see. These scorpions blend in very well with the cork bark and even seem to be camouflaged on the substrate and can be very easy to overlook. So using a black light really helps to make things much easier and safer. Now, as I mentioned, I have had a few broods of these scorpions in the past few months. Each of them had a brood around 25 to 30. Now, a lot of people have been expressing some interest in picking up some of these scorpions from me. And I have said many times, I am not in the business of selling tarantulas or scorpions. I have no desire to get into that business, but I also don't have room to keep all of these. So what I'm gonna do is uh, give a few of them away to some Patreon members and have a contest or something to subscribers, just people that are in the US. I'm here with Megan finally got her it took me forever to get here but we got her set up with some scorpions and she wanted to say hi to you guys hello <laughs> well, and she didn't come alone Hello. <laughs> right. well, I think we're gonna head back um, but I'm glad you got some scorpions I'm so excited yeah all right Thank you. But the majority of them, I have worked out an arrangement with Tanya over at Fear Not Tarantulas, and I wanna be sending the little baby scorpions to her, and, and she's gonna take care of putting them for sale up on our website and sending them out to you guys that wanted to buy some. So if you're interested in picking up one of my baby Florida bark scorpions, I will leave a link to the listing on Fear Not Tarantulas in the pinned comment on the top of the comment section, as well as I'll just have it linked in the description. Hopefully this video will help you provide them with the best possible care, and if you have any tips, tricks, or other husbandry advice or experience that you want to share on this species, make sure you tell us all about it down below in the comments. There's not a lot of videos out there that pertain to this particular species, and it can even be hard coming across some care sheets online. Now, I will be posting a detailed care sheet, uh, pretty much everything that I talked about in this video on my website, where I've got all of my care sheets listed, thetarantulacollective.com. So be sure you check that out. If you want to see some more scorpion videos that I've made, just check out this playlist right here. And if you want to see some awesome scorpion, tarantula, and snake feeding videos, just check out this playlist right here. Well, I really appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>